So I've started doing my inlighting here, and uh, what I use is called Prussian Blue. It's non-drying, um, and it's just a real nice um, paste that uh, wipe it on the metal, set it in the wood, set your metal in the wood, and then uh, when you pull it away, it you know leaves the blue paste showing, and that reveals all the high spots. Uh, really, not a complex process. Inlighting is actually you know fairly simple. It just requires basically a, a combination of peas. Practice, 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 and patience, patience, patience. This is not a process that you want to rush or try and get it in a hurry on. Um, it takes time to do a good inletting job. And uh, it's just a matter of coating their metal, getting a nice even coat on there. And you don't want a thick coat. You want an even coat that's fairly thin. Because if you build this stuff up, then it will give you false high spots. So you want it fairly thin on there, and then you set the piece in. A little bit of rub in this section. Um, I can do a little bit of rub back and forth to show me and reveal my spots. And when I take it away, you can see that uh, it leaves a touch of blue on all the high spots in here and right now I'm not I, I've got a nice fit on the shoulders it doesn't wobble back and forth it just slides in and out nice and easy there's no it's not tight tight but it's it's not loose either it's a it's a good conform fit so what I'm working on now is I'm working on removing the high spots in here because what I want to see is I want to see these shoulders these secondary shoulders here I want to see the second shoulder touching on the outside edges here so all of this high in this middle has to come down until it touches down evenly on these two outside shoulders so that's the plan and uh, like I said I'll be glassing this in with this end grain this open end grain I'll glass bed this so that it seals everything up but the glass bedding is not made it meant to take up any space in this it's not meant to fill in anything particularly it's meant to just seal it um, I want the edges especially the visible edges but I want all of these edges to make as much uniform contact as possible to handle the recoil so you know the ideal is is you won't be able to see any glass lines on the outside of the edges where the wood touches metal on the outside the glass will all be inside and hidden away so that's how it's done is it's just a slow process of remove this high spots and do it again and then remove some more high spots and just keep working my way down into it when I get the depth down into it to where the shoulders are touching then I'll start inletting down the action so it inlets the tang but right at the minute I'm just worried about getting this face nice and trued up and squared and shouldered up properly well, hopefully you can see this um, <clears throat> these are the high spots from the last um, Prussian blue and uh, inlet touchdown that I did and uh, you can see I'm just starting to touch down in the tang here so I took a pencil and, and kind of outlined it real quick just so that I get a rough idea of where I'm going what I'm going to do is I will take a, a chisel in here and I'm going to come inside of this line a little bit and just kind of um, punch it in and then take a little bit of this material out so that it's not rubbing anymore I've got quite a ways to go yet uh, the full thickness of the tang basically is the amount of depth that I have to go down here and uh, as I said this is a little extra tall so it's actually the thickness of the tang plus a little bit to get me down to depth and so this is where the, this work really starts to get tedious is because I'm working the radius this radius I'm working this radius and I'm starting to work the tang itself down into the block so there's a lot of compound stuff going on here you know there's the angle radius a radius and the tapered and drafted tang so there's a lot of material that's got to come out of this and it gets real slow and time consuming because you can only work these high spots if you try and get a you know if you try and rush this or, or take a big chunk of this out at any one time it's sure to screw up the inlet so it just takes a lot of time to work all these little high spots down and the further I get into this the more it's more time it's going to take uh, every time that I touch it down and and it'll leave more and more high spots the further I get into this so it's going to be quite a time consuming process 
process to take this down into here, but uh, this piece here is the worst of the inletting job. The rest of this uh, inlet and the rest of this action and uh, the other pieces is fairly quick and, and fairly easy, but uh, getting all of this compound stuff to go down in there properly and, and be a seamless fit, it takes a lot of time. So that's where I'm at, and uh, I'll just keep pressing away at it. This is the pile of tools I'm using right in a minute. Uh, a couple different files, and I usually use those to just kind of round this edge over in the high spots. Um, these are the cheapest set of chisels I own, and they're a set of Stanleys made in England. And um, the reason I own those, you wouldn't think that a, a high-end gun shop would own Stanleys, but uh, the reason I own these is uh, I own four of them, quarter through one inch, and they're the basic set of gouges, you know, just basic set of flat chisels, and uh, the reason I went with these instead of something much higher end is because these are used for basically just roughing work, and then the other reason is, is I use them as scrapers, uh, and you really shouldn't use a good chisel as a scraper, and so I bought these because they're they're easy to sharpen, it takes a couple wax across the uh, stone to get them back to an edge, and uh, they cut just fine for a little bit, but I can drag them across the wood and scrape them and, and dull the edge on them. I don't really care. It wouldn't be like damaging a really high-end chisel. Uh, if you look at the rest of my collection, all the rest of these, except for these two over here, all the rest of these down this line are either uh, Swiss or German made. So, um, you know, the, the flats that I have, yeah, they're a cheap set of, of uh, Stanleys. Um, they are the better set of Stanleys. They're made in England. They're a, a decent set, but uh, they're cheap. And uh, when I wear them down because I sharpen them a lot, I replace them with the same thing. And so they're, they're about as basic a set of, of flat chisels as you can get. But they work good for doing this kind of work because, uh, like I said, I use them as much as a scraper as I do as a chisel. So, say it's ruining a really high end set of uh, flats. So, in my other collection back here, I do have uh, several good sets of flats in my other collection back here in different sizes and so those ones I use for for regular high end chisel work but uh, the Stanleys are a good choice for this uh, cheaper stuff for doing scraper work and stuff like that so on with the show <clears throat> so I uh, took some chisels and uh, came in just inside the lines here and I only did this one little section because right now this is all that's touching on the tang is just in this little area and so I want to work this in small sections until I get it completely um, you know to where it's all touching and then I can start really deepening it a little quicker but uh, for now since I'm still primarily working this whole section and this whole section has to go down as one piece I'm working it in small areas that are just the spots that are touching uh, I did want to mention something about how chisels work uh, if you look at these, this style of chisel here is flat on one side and beveled on the other. And so when you push this into the wood, the side that's beveled is actually pushing it in and back. And so depending on whether you want your sidewalls to be cut um, to the outside or to the inside will determine which way you put your chisel in. If you put your chisel in this way, to where it's back to against the sidewall and drive it in, the beveled edge pushes it back out this way. If you put it in the other way and drive it in, of course it pushes it out the other way. So you gotta keep in mind which way your chisels work and uh, always push to the direction you want, otherwise you'll end up with a wider cut than you expect because of the way the chisel's pushing. And then of course to do these radiuses, um, I've got a whole series of gadgets in different sizes and shapes, but basically, you know, the different radiuses on these will get me close to where I need to be to make the radiuses on those. And like I said, I only took out just a little bit of wood in this section, and uh, I'll come in and, and uh, Prussian blue my action again and touch it down and see where I'm at. And, you know, I know right now it's going to be too narrow and I'll have to scrape some of these sidewalls. But I'm just going to slowly work this down just doing this and gradually increasing my way to the end of the tang and working my way down at the same time. It's a slow process. I mean, you know, I'd, there's guys that are a lot faster at it than I am. Um, but uh, if you want to do a really good job and make it look like a, the tree kind of grew around that piece of metal, it just takes time to really work it one little one little high spot at a time until it gets completely down into there so it's just a 
patience, patience, patience kind of thing and practice, practice, practice. Well, I thought I'd stop midway here and show you how I'm making progress. You can see that uh, the tang is starting to go in real good. It's not touching back here yet, but uh, it's getting real close. And I've got about a quarter plus the extra amount of wood, so maybe five sixteenths or three eighths worth of depth to go down yet. But uh, it is coming down in there. I'll uh, pull this out here in a second, and I'll show you what it looks like inside, so that you can see how the how the uh, you know the basically the opposite image of the action is is looks in the wood and, and where the high spots are and stuff, so that you can see how it looks when I'm actually scraping this. So you can see that these are the high spots out of after this touching and uh, all that has to be taken down and worked down just a little at a time and it's just done by uh, using chisels and, and scrapers and just keep working my way down in there but uh, you can also see where it removed the Prussian blue from the action so that's really all there is to it it's just a matter of keep working it down until it goes all the way in and, and the seat and fit is perfect so it's just a real slow process of, of scraping and removing wood a little at a time um, I'll just keep at it and hopefully when I get it all inlet I'll uh, give you a little more video to show you how it seats down in there and, and how it looks when it's all completely inlet. Well as you can see I'm making continuing to make progress here. You can see that I'm down um, over an eighth of an inch into this. Uh, the uh, lollipop on the end of the tang is starting to touch down now and I'm starting to take some wood out here. There's only about a sixteenth maybe less of an inch to uh, make a full touch down in this area so it is working its way down in there one of the things I wanted to show you though is uh, now that I'm down to this point this whole process is basically done with scrapers to uh, keep deepening this out and I wanted to show you these shavings these are some of the shavings off of the that are coming off of it they're only about probably two thousandths maybe three thousandths thick so for every time I put this into the wood and take it back out and then scrape down the high points I'm really only taking off about two or three thousandths at a time and so in order to increase this depth down to you know the full thickness of the tang basically or, or close to it um, going two or three thousandths at a time over the course of a, of a quarter of an inch or so and that's actually a little thicker than a quarter of an inch um, what it actually means is that's you know several hundred passes touch down and scrape, touch down and scrape, touch down and scrape several hundred times to make that depth. So it is a very slow process like I said before but I wanted you to understand why it's such a slow process. In order to get this tight of a fit and to get this fine of a edge and whatnot without breaking out or having any gaps or wide spots or anything like that it's all about just scraping it down and uh, you know when you're scraping instead of actually chiseling or gouging stuff out the shavings are you know only a few thousandths of an inch um, of material being taken off so it takes a long time to do it so that's as far as I got this week um, Tang is, you know, touching down all the way now, obviously, and it's down in there about a sixteenth of an inch at the shallowest point, and uh, over an eighth, close to three sixteenths at this point. So, about uh, three sixteenths, maybe a little less to go to uh, get it fully seated down in there. Um, pick it up next week and and keep going on just the way I'm doing, and uh, eventually it'll get all the way down in there, and, and I'll be able to move on to inlet and some other parts.